Hi everyone, let's now consider in this video the transmission mechanism of monetary policy. When a central bank decides to change interest rates, there are lots of different channels by which that change can work through before we have a final effect on the real economy, a final effect on inflation. And it's important in an exam situation, if you're talking about time lags in the economy and how monetary policy can take a, a while to feed through into the real economy, you need to explain why with some reference to the transmission mechanism. So let's go through it, let's understand how interest rates actually feed through the real economy. So it starts with a change in the bank rate, so let's use the Bank of England, let's use the Monetary Policy Committee as our base in point, UK context right here. And uh, we see that the Monetary Policy Committee change interest rates. Well, immediately that will affect four key channels, market rates, house prices, expectations and confidence and the exchange rate. Market rates are very much linked to the Bank of England repo rate, the base rate set by the Monetary Policy Committee. Let's say the MPC decide to cut interest rates, that reduces uh, the cost of actually borrowing money from the Bank of England for commercial banks, which therefore maybe will make it easier for them to charge lower rates to you and I, to, to consumers out there, to people that want to borrow basic loans, take out basic loans from the bank. So a cut in the Bank of England base rate should feed through very much to a cut in general rates in the economy, rates by which people actually go and take out loans and take out mortgages. So let's, uh, let's say that happens and market rates follow the change in the bank rate. That is going to affect borrowers, people that uh, want to borrow money. So if interest rates are cut by the Bank of England and market rates are also cut, it becomes cheaper to borrow. So borrowers are, are happy with this. People with mortgages are happy because uh, their interest repayments fall. Uh, people that are looking for a mortgage, that want a house maybe, are happy because again their mortgage payments each month are going to be lower than what they were before. And also it affects savers, people with uh, money held in bank accounts at the rate of return they get on their savings is actually going to fall. So market rates are important, affecting borrowers, uh, mortgage payers, people that want houses, savers, all sorts of people. Also affecting businesses that want to take up money and borrow money to fuel investment. So affecting firms and businesses as well. Uh, it has a direct Im impact on house prices. So again, if interest rates are cut, you can imagine that uh, Cetris Paribus, uh, there'll be more demand for housing now more demand for mortgages, given that the, the mortgage repayments each month are actually going to be lower with lower interest rates, pushing up the price of housing, pushing up confidence in the economy, maybe facilitating more spending as a result if house prices are rising, vice versa for a, a rise in interest rates. Uh, it can also affect expectations and confidence. So let's say interest rates are cut, um, maybe that's because uh, the Bank of England are trying to stimulate further growth in the economy and if people think that reducing interest rates will lead to growth in the economy it might raise their confidence. Businesses might be more willing to invest knowing that growth is going to increase in the future. Consumers may be more willing to spend if they think unemployment is going to fall and they can see again growth and higher incomes in the future. Uh, whereas if interest rates rise that may, might be a sign of overheating in the economy, inflation being too high, in which case interest rates rising might uh, curtail growth in the future and may dampen confidence. And the bank rate can also affect the exchange rate. So let's say interest rates are cut by the Monetary Policy Committee. This can well depreciate the exchange rate as foreign investors maybe move their money away from the UK seeking a more lucrative investment instead of holding their money in UK bank accounts with now lower relative interest rates. And if uh, these people do move that money away, that's going to put downward pressure on the exchange rate, increasing the supply of the pound, uh, leading to a depreciation of the exchange rate. So these three factors affect domestic demand in terms of consumer spending and investment, but also net external demand because foreigners will also have a part to play uh, when it comes to reducing rates, when it comes to demand for UK pounds, for example, when it comes for demand for UK assets. So if interest rates are rising, you can imagine that demand for UK assets may well rise if the interest rate being paid on those assets is actually also increasing. So there is also a net external demand link here anyway for UK-based goods, for UK-based assets. Uh, add these two things up and you get total demand. So you can see how a change in the base rate can affect the total demand out there for UK goods and services and assets. But a change in the exchange rate will not affect demand, it will affect supply in one sense because a change in the exchange rate will make imports more expensive. So for, consumer, uh, for uh, businesses who actually import raw materials in their production process, their cost of production will rise or fall when interest rates change and therefore when the exchange rate changes. So let's say uh, interest rates rise, that will lead to an appreciation of the exchange rate, more hot money flows into the UK. And as a result, uh, 
the price of imports, the price of um, imported raw materials will actually fall. Whereas if interest rates fall, that puts downward pressure on the exchange rate and imported raw materials go up in price. So input prices therefore will be effective, affected. So whether it's total demand, aggregate demand, or whether it's input prices, which affects aggregate supply, interest rates have a part to play in affecting both of those things, which therefore will affect the domestic inflation in the UK and therefore have a, uh, a direct effect on overall inflation in the UK, whether it's demand-led or whether it's supply-led. And that's how the monetary policy transmission mechanism works. So when you're writing an essay, don't just say, oh, uh, the effect of reducing interest rates depends on the, the time lag involved, or this, the size of the time lag may limit the effect of this policy in the short run, full stop. Don't just stop there. Talk about how there are many different cha channels of the, of the transmission mechanism and how a change in interest rates needs to work through each channel individually before we can see a final impact on either inflation or growth or whatever in the economy. Talk about the monetary policy transmission mechanism in detail uh, when you make that point and you're going to score very highly. Thanks for watching guys. See you all next time.